Hello, my name is Erica, and I am joined with Liana, who is the Executive Director of the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires. And today we want to talk to you about serving on nonprofit boards. Liana, talk to us a little bit about the nonprofit sector. Well, as you know, I love the nonprofit sector. It's a huge force for good in our country. It's actually a really big sector. It is the third largest sector in the US, just behind retail and manufacturing. The irony is most nonprofits themselves are really small. They have one to 10 employees, their annual revenue is under $500,000, but they do a lot of good. And that's where volunteers come in. They do all this good with the help of volunteers. And board members are essentially volunteers. So in this video series, we're gonna dive into what it's like to serve on a board. We're gonna talk about some of the roles and responsibilities. And what we're really hoping is that people will walk away from this feeling like, hey, maybe this is something I should try. I hope so, because I know firsthand in my role at the Nonprofit Center how much nonprofits need board members. And I know as a board member myself how rewarding and fun it is. There are a lot of benefits to joining a board. First of all, you get to build a business, basically. A nonprofit is like a business, and that might be something you normally don't get to do. Strategize, look at finances, manage. That might not be what you do in your regular job. So it's a great way to develop those capabilities. It's a little like being on the executive team at your company, but you're getting to do it for a cause that you feel strongly about or a cause that matters. Exactly. You also develop leadership skills. I know of no better place to develop those. Things like facilitating a group meeting, uh, developing consensus. Those are all leadership skills that you get sitting around a table with a bunch of people trying to move a mission forward. And finally, you get to grow your network. You're sitting around a table with great people, and they know people, and some of those people might become business associates. Yeah, I've met some of my greatest friends by serving on boards. Already you have like-minded people that are coming together. And then you just get to collaborate in the idea space with, with others. And there's something inspiring about that. And so it's pretty inevitable that you're gonna meet somebody on that board who you're gonna click with. Basically, it's really fun working with a team to make something happen, to make something good happen. Right, we can put our time and effort into a lot of things, but knowing that we're putting our time and effort into moving something positive forward in the world is really rewarding. So people often wonder, do I have the skills to help with a board? Do I have a skill, the skills to actually serve on a nonprofit board? And I think people might be surprised at the number of skill sets and ways that you can get involved in a board. Do you want to share some of these, Liana, of ways that, skill sets that you can bring to the table that are actually really helpful to a board that you might not have thought of? Basic office skills, helping with a database or helping improve the nonprofit's website. Those are some things. Uh, research. Research is uh, something you can do at home. You don't even have to be there in person to help that nonprofit. Um, also, creative skills. Nonprofits often need someone to help with social media. That's a big, a big thing. And also brainstorming fundraising ideas or themes for fundraising events. Uh, so there's a whole creative side and a social side. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. No matter what age you are, whatever skill set you have, whatever your expertise is in the world, there's a good chance the board could use your skill set. And here's an example. Let's just say that you happen to be really into Bitcoin. You're a cryptocurrency aficionado and you want to learn more about it for yourself personally. Well, there's a good chance you could bring that knowledge that you've been cultivating on your own to a board and say like, hey, what if we were to open up and allow cryptocurrency donations for our board? And we actually have that example on our board that someone who had been studying this on their own brought this to the table for us and helped us establish a donation platform that was cryptocurrency based. That's just one example. One of my favorites is, you know, let's say you do the same thing every day. You're sitting behind a computer every day. That's kind of your world. Sometimes a board will offer you the service opportunities that are out of the box for you. Maybe you just want to throw some tables, set up some tables, set up some chairs, get to roll up your sleeves and, and get to work. We've got a, a guy on our board who he really enjoys serving with us and he likes, he volunteers to do some of the more heavy lifting things because it just gives him a different thing to do than what he does every day. Yeah, those are great, great examples. 
So there may be a few myths that are in your way from volunteering to serve on a board. Now we've recruited some of our board members at the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires to break down and debunk some of these myths for you. Let's check it out. Myth one, you have to be rich to sit on a board. The truth is, you actually don't have to be rich to sit on a board. Many of uh, the board members that I've worked with aren't rich, and, and in fact are really more motivated by the cause and the mission of the organization. Myth number two, you have to have connections to wealthy or influential people. I don't think that direct connections are critical, but I do think you have to be willing to share your own relationships and connections with the nonprofit whose board you're serving on. Myth number three, you have to know all about nonprofits. Like going into anything else, you go in not knowing everything and then you learn as you go. Myth number four is you have to ask directly for money. There are a number of ways to contribute to the nonprofit that you're gonna serve on. And one of those is just simply by connecting people, introducing your network to the fact that you're on the board. Myth number five, you have to be influential to serve on a board. No. You, there's a reason why you're on that board. There's a reason why you've been asked to be on that board. And I hope it's because of what you know or how you're involved in the community or what sector you represent. You should really care about it and should be able to talk about it. Myth number six, serving on a board is something you do just to put on your resume. You can put it on your resume, particularly for younger people. That is, should not be the reason why you serve on, want to serve on a board. You should want to serve on a board to help them, help the community, or help what their mission is, because it should be something that you're passionate about as well. So we hope by now, you're starting to think, wait a minute, I think I could serve on a board. So Liana, let's break down some of the uh, ways, the next steps. So what would somebody do next if they're sitting here and saying, you know what, I do want to look into board service. What do I do? Obviously, the first thing is to think about what your own passions and interests are. And you can learn a lot about what nonprofits might address those concerns just by Googling around on the internet. But you can also ask friends and family and coworkers because undoubtedly some of them are volunteering. You can also get a list of nonprofits in your neck of the woods from your local chamber of commerce or your library. And finally, there are two national websites which are really cool. One is called guidestar.org and that's like a profile and data site where you can get every ounce of information about a nonprofit, including their financials, who serves on their board, uh, interesting stuff like that, that would help you make a decision about joining that board. The other site is called greatnonprofits.org, and that's like Yelp. It's a review site for nonprofits where people of all different types, donors, people who are helped by the organization, board members, everyone can share their experience with that nonprofit. So between those two sites, you can get a lot of information that will tell you, yes, this sounds like a great organization that I want to join. I think you'll be shocked when you start digging around. There are probably many nonprofits right in your local community that you might not even be aware of. And I would suspect many of them are looking for help from someone like you. So Liana, let's say you find your top five boards that you'd love to inquire about serving on. What do we need to prepare? What does a person need to prepare in order to approach a board? You have to be voted on by other board members in order to join that board. So people are gonna be looking for a resume, basically, but basically the focus is not to put every detail of your entire career, but the highlights, uh, your achievements, any community service, of course, and maybe a couple of personal things as well. So do some research, find some nonprofits near you that you're interested in, create a one paragraph bio that just sums up who you are and what you have to offer the board, and send a note to the email address that goes with the nonprofit and see if they're looking for board members. If you need help with the bio, go to the portal that's attached to this video and you can catch some examples there. So Liana, we've talked about this whole nonprofit sector and we've really 
broken down that nonprofits need help. They need help with various skill sets, expertise, experiences, and there are so many ways to get involved and help. So we hope that you've enjoyed this video and that maybe now you're thinking about what it would be like for you to serve on the board of a nonprofit. If you've enjoyed this video, we have more for you where we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper into what it's like to really serve on a board. Stay with us and we'll see you next time.